Hello everybody and welcome to this week's YouTube video. I want to talk about something really interesting today and I think that um, I'm quite enjoying this new range of YouTube videos. So um, this little horse that I'm about to talk about is really interesting. His name's Roscoe. He's not a baby, he's seven, six, six or seven. And he is here for training. He is a really, really interesting little horse. Here he is. So I'll tell you a little bit about Roscoe. So Roscoe has recently had ulcers. Now, Roscoe no longer has ulcers, as in he has been scoped clear of ulcers. But there are some things about Roscoe that tell me that he would still have ulcers if I, he hadn't had that scope. I filmed a clip of me doing some groundwork with him a few days ago and he still has all of the symptoms of ulcers but I know because he had a scope three days before he arrived here that he no longer has them. Now Roscoe is a stressy type, he is unsure of his environment and lacks confidence in himself but one of the things that his owner has really struggled with is his like want to be with her. So like now, for example, he's quite happy to be stood next to me. But if I reach out and I'm touching him too much, that brings on a little bit of uncertainty for him. But some of the things that tell me that his body is still holding that response to ulcers is what is really interesting. So his body is still saying, I have ulcers because his nervous system has learnt the pattern of ulcers. So his nervous system has learnt to protect his rib cage. It has learnt to make his trapezius muscles tight, the muscles behind his armpits. So I'm doing lots of things, including him having body work, to help him unravel that response. Because otherwise what can happen is, and vets have their heads scratching on this, is that you treat a horse for ulcers, but they still show all of the symptoms of ulcers because their body has learned to protect itself from when it had the ulcers, but now it doesn't have them anymore. Its body, your body can still just keep practicing that same feeling. It's much like um, when a horse has a, you know, pain memory, essentially. And so what we have to do is we have to show him a new way of holding his body. So I'm gonna show you a few things just in his stable with him, if I can set my phone up, to show you a little bit what I mean about these responses um, up close, so you can see the kind of things that I'm looking for when I'm working with horses. Because when I'm working with these trickier horses or these horses that are problems or you know need a restart whatever it might be there are certain things that I look out for to understand what is going on for those horses what their body is telling me as well as what their behavior is telling me so I'm going to um, take his rug off and I'll show you what I'm talking about I want to precursor this as well by saying that ulcers in horses can show up in so many different ways so so many and you know lethargy they can be slower they can be hyper reactive they can bolt they can buck they can be sensitive to tack up they can bite you when you touch them there are so many different things and one of the real telltale signs for me is there are some acupressure points that you can look at now i learned this actually on youtube from somebody else but it is really very interesting and um this horse is no different in that he does test positive as such when you press on those acupressure points. Now, other things to notice with horses with ulcers. Sorry, this starts as about a bit my brain. You can tell my brain works. goes about 100 miles an hour. Is things like he's more guarded on his right side than his left. Um, so I'm aware of that straight away. The hind gut sits closer to the outside of their body on the right side. So you can sometimes, right hind lameness can be because of ulcers. So there are so many things that we can look at and so many things that we can see in a horse like Roscoe. But the interesting thing for me is this horse doesn't have ulcers. He had them, but he no longer has them. And so for me, it's now a case of helping his body to unravel. And actually just already, 
you can see by me bringing some awareness to this part of him is creating this big yawning response. Now, so this muscle here is one that is has been very, very, very tight. And you can see when I bring a little bit of awareness to it, that we get this big yawning response from him because he has been holding the mu this muscle here for a long period of time. So you can see when I run my hand down here, there's a real quivering to the muscle. Here it's slightly better than it was a few days ago, but this is a really tight, it feels very tight under my hand. So I was talking about these acupressure points. So we have one that is a little bit behind the withers here. So I'd say there's some reaction, the moving away is happening, but and he's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's not twitching and it's not stuttering. So this is positive, that response is getting better. But then down here, can you see that? And he's coming round to me. So this down here, this is a really clear indicator that we have a horse that is still in some discomfort. And the trouble is, is they're so good at telling us if we're listening. And so it's important for us to notice what our horse is saying in reference to another horse. You know, some horses will go very, very dull in their coat, whereas Roscoe's got a lovely shine to his coat. And although he is scoped clear of the ulcers, it's not been very long, so his coat wouldn't have essentially changed overnight. So there's that element to be aware of. Roscoe has been perfectly behaved to be ridden this entire time, but his owner saw that he had some resistance to come to the mounting block and he had some different, you know, issues in that respect. So it's really a lot about looking at the entire picture. And what I'm doing in this moment is I'm just bringing some awareness to this muscle here for him. I've also been teaching him to stretch his front legs. So to lift and stretch his front legs like I was doing in the, uh, the video with Dee Dee when I was doing some loading, because he can learn how to unravel his own body as well as me helping him and as well as having some body work. So it's a lot of different things that we can do to help a horse like Roscoe, to listen and hear these small things. He lifted a leg at me in that video and I will share that video now and I'll do a voiceover on it to explain a bit more about what it is I'm doing. But I think this is such an important topic. There are, I think it's 90% of all horses, amateur or professional, that have ulcers. So... Potentially, if you are going to your horse and they are resistant to you walking around to the right side of their body, they are holding tension in this part of their body here behind the shoulder. They are sensitive when you tack them up. Their coat is dull. They're sensitive to your leg, more so on the right rein. The canter transitions are not good. The, there's so many things that can show up that we have to question, how is the diet? How is the management? How is the stress levels? Are they finding a good place in their body on a regular basis? Or are they stressed on a regular basis? So I wanted to share with you some small clips from one of the first sessions that I had with Roscoe. You can see he's very, very straight in his body, his neck is unbending and he just it doesn't feel like he can really step away from me in any kind of a smooth way all of his steps are very stiff and tight you can see just a small amount of awareness to these areas of tension behind his shoulder are creating this yawning he's turning around to me he's really not sure about what i'm doing but when i'm still and i'm not asking too much he's able to let go of a lot of this tension and I think a lot of it stems from him having a headache. I believe he's very, very tight in his pole. And we've been doing some work with the light therapy to help him with that. But you can see that there's just a lot to let go of. He's got so much history to just release that this is what he's doing a lot of. And I'm mindful in my groundwork sessions to allow him to do that. You can see here how guarded he is of me going to his right side. I just very calmly, very gently go there. And then once I'm on that side, I'm just mindful. I'm not asking too much of him. On, 
on it's so interesting with him often the approach to his body is worse than actually when you get to touch him but you can see how stiff and tight and difficult he finds this his front legs hardly step forward in front of the shoulder his hind leg hardly steps under his body so these very early sessions with him were a lot about just bringing awareness to his body i want to show him a little bit about how to stretch the front leg here he really doesn't feel like that's a possibility in that moment. And he snatches it back away from me. I just go again and I ask him very slowly. And I say, can you try and show me that you can stretch forward here? And then he allows me to. And it's interesting in bringing his hand, his nose down to my hand to say almost, oh, okay, that's what you wanted. That's really interesting. So that was a very early session. And then here we have a session from yesterday so now you can see him stepping out in front of his shoulder much better <coughs> excuse me a bit poorly still and you can see that he's able to take much softer steps we are by no means healed but he is starting to find different answers and you can see here the bit of scraping a bit of frustration he's kind of almost saying to me oh, i don't really know how to hold myself in this new way yet Maybe I can go faster, maybe I can go slower, maybe I can throw myself around a little bit. But all of it is improvement and all of it is a better awareness for him of his body. So as you can see now, he's able to really step through and find the outside of his body. And I believe that he's more tight on the left rein actually because the right side of his rib gauge is tighter where he's been bracing more where the gut is closer to the wall on that right side so you can see on the right when i turn him right his left side is much more open he's actually very good at stepping through and across this way and softening down so what i'm doing is just going through these very basic patterns of movement from the ground to help show his body a new way of feeling a new way of holding itself this isn't going to be quick and I'm going to require some help from my very like amazing team that I have. He's had his teeth looked at to make sure that's good. He's having his saddle looked at and we're going to look at having a different saddle that's definitely wide enough through the middle where it sits behind the wither where he has this band of tension in his musculature. But all of this is interesting how he's now here kind of unable to think, oh, can I go slowly and be soft out on the circle? Do I need to run? I don't react. I don't tell him. I just let him feel his way. I let him work it out for himself to a degree. The lick, the chew comes. He thinks, should I stop now? And I say, no, let's find the walk. Let's see if you can just be soft in the walk. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe I can do that. And then you start to get this horse that really feels like he can start to let go. Not that he needs a human to do it for him. You see still the resistance of me approaching, but so different in that then when I do touch, straight away that softness comes. The neck comes lower and he starts to understand that touch can make him feel good rather than bad. So I've managed to open the camera lady. So a few things I just wanted to show you to be really aware of. So one thing that I want to improve for this pony is this. You see the, the little twitches? And I'm not going to push it. If I was to ask more here, we'd get more of a reaction. You can see he's still a bit holding through his rib cage here as well. Then you've got this point up to here. So you can see there's a little bit of reaction for him, but not too much now. It's a little bit better than it would have been before. But down here, you can see still... We're getting this tightness and this could be because this muscle is still just super super tight so a lot of what we've been doing is teaching him to do this for himself at the stretching wall but also every day when we pick his feet out just bringing the leg forward and allowing him to find that stretch down the back of his shoulder you can see he's pretty unsure about doing those things and if we just come around onto the other side of him Luke, So again, same thing, but you'll notice that it's slightly less good here. So here we have a slightly more reaction. You can see the gentle twitching of up here and then down to here. This is even tighter. I can hardly bring myself to touch him. I'm very gentle with my touch. It's not a lot. The head coming round 
and then we've got sensitivity there as well and I'm very mindful I don't want to push his boundaries you can see in his face he's quite upset about it he looks quite reserved the mouth is very tight we've got a little bit of a twitching of the lip which tells me that there's some better responses coming some releasing coming but also we need to be aware of where he's holding the tension from the ulcers in his body still because this will allow us to help him undo those to start then feeling better and not then have a recurrence of the ulcers. Another thing that is very important to discuss is diet. Um, Roscoe's diet has throughout this period of having ulcers and now not having ulcers been the same. Um, he has fed a high fibre, low fat with some speedy beet in it as well. So he is fed the way all of my horses are fed. And that's really, really important. So there you have it. My short piece on a horse with ulcers that doesn't have ulcers. Um, I think it's a really interesting topic and probably one that isn't spoken about enough and isn't done anything with enough. And he's probably really, really, really common. And a horse that has had previously had ulcers that no longer has ulcers will cycle in its body that it still has the ulcers for a very long time because its body doesn't know how to let go of the story of the ulcers before. Could some, some could be said for the same with humans and trauma. You know, we store trauma in our body until we move that trauma through our body. I'll meet you in the barn. And that's really complicated because we can go around carrying our stuff around for a very long time when we don't need to. And it's the same for our horses. So yeah, if you're interested in ways of training like this, then you can head over to my website, which will be on the screen right now. And you can learn all about it. I really hope you found this video interesting and I'll see you for next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.